As some of you know, I have been in the Netherlands for the past two days on a mission that must remain top secret, at least for the time being. However, while I was there, I briefly gatecrashed a mini exhibition dedicated to construction equipment utilising future fuels, including both electric and hydrogen fuel. And notably, the exhibition was not some hippy-dippy crystal ball gazing affair. This wasn't about the possible tech of tomorrow. It was about alternative fuel solutions that are available to purchase, own and rent today. It's wholly appropriate that an event of that nature should take place in the Netherlands because the Dutch have deservedly earned a reputation for being among the most strident when it comes to all things sustainability. As only one of two Brits in attendance, as far as I could tell, I was struck by the difference in attitude between my fellow countrymen and by my Dutch hosts. When presented with the means to reduce the environmental impact of construction and demolition, the Dutch, and also the Swedes, the Danes, the Finns and the Norwegians, say, why wouldn't we? Faced with the same promise of sustainability and carbon reduction, the British response thus far has been, why should we? The Dutch and those in Scandinavia seemingly look at factors like battery charging times and plan ways around them. Us Brits, meanwhile, use such factors as excuses, reasons to maintain the status quo. We'll consider electric when we can do a full day's work on a single charge. It's just one of the many reasons presented to allow us to continue to jeopardise the global climate. Now, by their nature, we Brits are conservative, or at least we've become so. We embrace tradition and are often reluctant to change. And it seems the only way we'll actually make any significant change in the fueling of our construction equipment is if that change is mandated or legislated. Now, such an approach feels at odds with this nation's once glorious and innovative past. It's also out of step where most of the world's major decisions are being driven by the need for sustainability and carbon reduction. But it also shows a lack of ambition that could prove costly in the long run. Now, make no mistake, switching from diesel to electric or to hydrogen brings with it a multitude of challenges that includes potential changes to working practices and schedules. It will also require a great deal of upskilling and training, not competence card, not worth the plastic it's printed on training, but practical, meaningful, hands-on training, the type of training required to extract every last watt of power and every last bit of value from batteries. It will also require companies to invest in new infrastructure to, to help keep those batteries charged and to manage the energy they produce. Operators will need to op change their operating practices. Mechanics and fitters will need to learn a whole new power unit and driveline. Those changes will take time. Rome wasn't powered in a day, as they sort of say. So it feels like we're currently wasting valuable time sitting on the fence and actively seeking excuses to stay precisely where we are. Now, obviously, the key concern here is that we are knowingly continuing to harm the planet. We're also putting off until tomorrow, or 2050, what we could and probably should be doing today. What strikes me as odd and frustrating in roughly equal measure is that the UK and demolition industry's refusal to see uh, the inevitable switch away from diesel as an opportunity. Rather than seizing a first mover advantage, the UK seems content to allow the Scandinavians and the Dutch to do all the heavy lifting while we watch from the wings. But make no mistake here, the writing is on the wall for diesel, but as an industry and as a nation, we're refusing to read the signs. And yet, this is merely another step along a well-trodden path. As an industry, we've already embraced stage three, stage four, and stage five emissions reductions. We've seen low emission zones morph into ultra-low emission zones. And while we've done so grudgingly at times, we've embraced each of those changes. Surely the time has come for us, us Brits to put on our big boy pants and embrace just one more change. It won't be quick and it won't be easy. Truth be told, we may never see the benefit ourselves but our children and our grandchildren will. And surely that's good enough reason to go Dutch? <laughs>